Dear Bülent Bey, welcome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Hi. How are you? <laughs> thank, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, it was a very uh, nice grand opening ceremony. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. And your contribution uh, was uh, huge. Thank you very much again. Uh, Mr. Shenmer, uh, let's start uh, from your personal background. Because you are very well known. In, you are a celebrity in Turkey, in the banking industry. You are the celebrity of uh, capital markets of Turkey. And let's uh, mention a little bit about the, uh, this uh, to world uh, audience. Uh, we are uh, live on YouTube now, and we are going to share this video uh, after uh, cutting uh, each part one by one. So uh, you started from Arthur Anderson, and then uh, please uh, share your uh, the background, and then I will ask some questions about the course. Okay. I started my first career in Arthur Anderson London office. Uh, as many people know, Arthur Anderson was one of the biggest auditing companies in the world. And when I joined Arthur Anderson, uh, the, the job of auditing in our country, in Turkey, was not known very well. Uh, there were no regulations governing the audit of the companies. So it was a very new career for me. And I started in London office uh, because the number of audit jobs Arthur Anderson got from it, Turkey was not too many. Uh, so I started there and then uh, we had some uh, five companies we audited in Turkey. We came to Turkey, spent some time and then go back to London. So I really, my the first initial career is auditing. So I really know what a balance sheet is, what an income statement is, how to audit assets, how to audit liabilities, and uh, the generally accepted accounting principles. So my background is accounting finance. Now, uh, just by coincidence, Arthur Anderson assigned me a bank job, audit of a bank, and then a second bank came, they assigned me to the second bank, just by coincidence, the third bank, and after the third bank, a new fourth bank came and they say, hey, Bernard knows how to audit banks. <laughs> then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22, 23, 24, 25. You see why was? I know how to count. I, I audited 25 banks and then I became really a bank expert in Arthur Anderson. And uh, one of the banks uh, just offered me a job and then I joined uh, the bank and I served also as a CEO, a general manager of a bank, a, a big bank in Turkey. Those were the days when we were newly developing the retail banking in Turkey, the first ATM business, the first credit card business, the first mortgage banking, etc. So therefore I was able really to uh, use my uh, uh, knowledge, skills, and initiative to introduce new products for the banking industry, very, very new products for the banking industry, then I really know how to look at the banks from an auditor's point of view, and on the other side also how a bank executive should really look to a bank. Uh, I call it as I was really, I sat on one side of the table for 11 years and then on, sat on the other side of the table as an executive uh, for some 20 years. So uh, I became a banker. And uh, during all these, uh, let's say, uh, uh, working under pressure, working under very tight deadlines with a lot of stress, as you know, bankers, work with stress, you know, you give a loan and something happens to the borrower <laughs> and you, you're upset, you know, how can I collect my money back? Uh, there are regulations uh, governing all the banks. You have a lot of regulations you have to comply with. And then uh, I, I said, you know, I should never stop teaching in university. So even when I was a CEO, I continued on teaching in the Bosphorus University in Istanbul. Uh, you know, I, uh, there I taught some 
first uh, auditing auditing uh, uh, courses and then some accounting courses and then bank management course asset and liability management bank management courses and I, days i told my secretary i said from one o'clock to three o'clock every monday don't put any meetings for me i'm going to the university so i kept that as my let's say the primary job you know and i liked it i like sharing with young people my knowledge my experience and i'm sure the students benefited out of that and uh, you know do, doing all these things i was also uh, uh, you know related with the turkish businessmen's association to see out in turkey uh, so i worked worked in the parliamentary committee finance committee there I also was in charge of developing the first uh, code of conduct of TCA, the first code of conduct of uh, Turkish Businessmen's Association. And uh, you know, that was also a, a very nice experience, a good experience for me. And I acted also for six years as the chairman of the American Chamber of Commerce in Istanbul, in Turkey. So I had, uh, you know, some friends, U.S. friends, some, you know, get-togethers, businessmen get-togethers, and uh, you know, one day, uh, a, a, somebody from U.S. A came and said, uh, you know, we want an appoint uh, appointment from you, and I gave the appointment. I said, you know, how can I help you? He said, I'm here to investigate the ethical behavior of Turkish businessmen. I said, ah. Oh, you came all the way from USA just to investigate the ethical behavior of the Turkish businessman. He said, yes, that's my duty. And he asked me certain questions and I answered them. Uh, I'm sure he visited many other also businessmen. And I said, I want a report from you. And after three or four weeks later, he sent me uh, his report. And I, I began to read it page by page, page by page. And as I turned the pages, those uh, sentences that I, I've read, those were the things I know myself, personally I know, it's, it was not something new for me, but to read these sentences from his point of view uh, as a foreigner, you know, made me very sad because uh, the conclusion there was uh, in Turkey, uh, the Turkish businessman's ethics, uh, you know, uh, is very poor. You know, there are certain unethical behavior, even in the government sector, in bureaucracy, in private sector. You know, I was very sad. Uh, and at the end of the report, he put some uh, recommendations and reading what should be done in Turkey uh, about ethics, business ethics, and reading those lines, you know, there was one line I remember exactly. It says, uh, in Turkey, uh, Turkey should establish a non-profit organization to deal with ethics uh, in, in Turkey. Then I said, hey, uh, after my chairmanship uh, uh, in this uh, AMCHAM, American Chamber of Commerce, I should establish an association to deal with ethics. Therefore, uh, you know, after six years, uh, I established uh, uh, the Center for Ethics, Turkish uh, Ethics Center. Uh, and you know, our primary objective is really to concentrate first on young generation, because you know, if, we, if we educate the young generation uh, for ethics, if they become aware of ethics, then they will become managers in future. Somebody may become, uh, go to the politicians. You know, it, it, it was really very, very difficult for us to start first with companies. So we started with the young people and we established an ethics uh, uh, leadership, uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, program for nine universities, ethics leadership with call it uh, ELA, ELA in Turkish, ELA, Ethics Leadership Academy. It's an eight, eight week seminar, uh, every week, three hours uh, and uh, all the nine universities uh, from nine universities 
we have graduated up to now some 1,800 students from that academy. And every semester we open a new one. Uh, at present, uh, the 14th uh, semester students are attending and there are some 500 students at present. Uh, so 1,800 plus 500 uh, this semester. So 2,300 2, graduates. So our hope is that the more we graduate from this academy, the more uh, young people will be aware of ethics. Uh, you know, at least they will be aware of ethics. I don't say, I don't claim that they will be ethical, you know, because to be ethical in an environment which is not ethical, to be ethical in an unethical environment is not very easy, you know. If, if you are in an unethical economy and you're alone as a manager there and you want to be, to, to be ethical, it's very, very difficult for you. <laughs> you know, if you, if, if you operate, if, you, if you're a manager in a company who doesn't uh, have really ethical values, it's very difficult for you. And uh, you may say, you know, don't join that company. You may say, you know, resign from that company. Uh, but if there are many such companies around, then certain people, certain good people really, uh, unfortunately, and with really, uh, you know, they're good people, but they cannot, they cannot behave ethically uh, because of the circumstances, because of the sur surrounding. And they say, you know, God damn, I don't want to do this, but I'm forced to do it. Now, I know I'm doing something wrong, uh, but what can I do? What can I do? So, uh, you know, in a way, it is our duty really one by one uh, to make uh, every institution behave ethically, every individual behave ethically. And I think uh, this uh, job is not only the job of a, a single association, it's everybody, it should become everybody's job. So I'm very happy that uh, the WBAF in the business school has put the uh, business ethics, the ethical governance uh, as a certification program, as an executive program, and as an elective uh, program in, in, in its curriculum. Uh, because I believe that the future of business, the future of success, really the first thing is ethics. To be, uh, to be ethical is going to be more important, more important as time passes by. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy that, uh, you know, I started with Arthur Anderson as an auditor. I became a banker and then I always kept my relationship with the universities. And I'm also happy that, you know, I devote uh, time to ethics and when I, when I was dealing with the young students, then I discovered that they are, they are forgetting to read books. You know, they, they're not reading books. Turkish, Turkish young people, they are forgetting to read books. And I said, what, what shall I do? I said, hey, let's, let me uh, just establish a foundation this time. Herkese kitap vakfı. So Books for Everyone Foundation, I established a foundation. Also, I'm the founding chairman of that association. Up to now, we have distributed half a million books uh, to Anatolia, to, to children, to young people who need books. In Anatolia, in certain parts of Anatolia, uh, children cannot really get uh, books for themselves to read. And there are certain schools who do not really have a library, you know, almost in 70% of the schools do not have a library here. So we said uh, we should open a library in every school. And we started doing that, obviously with the donations coming uh, to the foundation. And I'm very happy that ethics and books, uh, audit, finance, ethics, books, uh, that uh, is making me busy. And WBAF. And yes, now WBAF. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also happy, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sandberg, I think, I think uh, business ethics will be more important in coming uh, years. Not only for big companies, not 
only for SMEs or enterprises, but also for small companies, for, for startups too, startup ventures. Because I uh, know that now investors started questioning the ethical governance of startup ventures. I think this is an important uh, development. Maybe some years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, when you say ethics, it was a very abstract issue. I mean, people couldn't materialize it in their minds and couldn't approach it very seriously. But now, this is not the case. Uh, when we established the Ethical Governance Committee at the WBAF, the most number of uh, I mean, participants uh, among all committees uh, were, uh, was uh, the Ethical Governance Committee. Uh, this is showing how there is a great demand uh, also from all uh, corners uh, of the world uh, to the issue. So uh, ethical governance is affecting uh, also the company valuation. And this is very important for startups and also very uh, important for investors because investors will pay uh, according to the uh, company valuation and startups will receive more money <laughs> if there is a better uh, ethical uh, governance. So your course is very important for the WBA Business School. And, uh, and this course is not only for startups or, or entrepreneurs, but it is also uh, for uh, executives of companies, of uh, corporate life, isn't it? Uh, because certified yes. certified executive becoming a certified executive uh, uh, for uh, compliance and uh, the, the ethical uh, governance issues is also will be something uh, very uh, important. And could you please uh, tell why this course is important for companies as well as individuals? Yes, uh, I think. Uh... Uh, when we when we look at the individual side, you know the individuals, uh, many individuals just uh, have a relationship with a company, and uh, when they join a company, uh, for example, my students joining a company, uh, they are really uh, watched very carefully by the company for their behavior and. Uh, you know, uh, morality is becoming very important uh, in the human, uh, let's say, uh, capabilities. And uh, for example, banks in Turkey, uh, they have issued their, uh, let's say, code of conduct. Uh, the people working in the banking industry, uh, you know, they, were, they, they, they really should show that they comply with uh, ethical values. So individually, even if uh, you know they have their own uh, individual private life outside, uh, when they really wear their company hat, then they should really comply with the company uh, values and company company code of conduct. And when you look from the company point of view, uh, in a company we have many different, let's say, levels positions in the company starting from the board of directors and the CEO, assistant general managers, etc. And uh, really unethical behavior uh, uh, sometimes comes in a company. It's like, a, I say, it's, uh, uh, because we learned the word this year, COVID-19. <laughs> it's like COVID-19, you know, the, the, the unethical behavior is like a COVID-19 virus. It may sometimes in some companies start from the very bottom of the organization and then just climb up, 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 up to the CEO. <laughs> and in certain organizations, it's just vice versa. It starts from the up and then it goes down, 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 down. So whichever is the case, you know, uh, the, the uh, company becomes uh, unethical and then uh, they, be, they, be, they began to lose customers, they began to lo lose their uh, valuable uh, suppliers, relationships, etc. Uh, so therefore, uh, if somebody asks me the question, you know, who should be ethical in a company? 
who should know the ethical values, who should know the ethical principles in a company? My answer is everybody in the company. They say, including the drivers? Yes, including the drivers, including the ladies who carry uh, Turkish coffee to us or tea to, to us. Everybody working in the organization should have an understanding of ethics, should have really a vision of ethics and ethical culture and a, a view. Uh, they should have a capability of looking to things, evaluating things from an ethical point of view. That is very important. We managers look to certain things from different perspectives, sometimes from profitability perspective. You know, how can we make the most pro uh, profits? Sometimes from competition perspective, how can we compete? And sometimes from gaining market share, growing, growing the company perspective. Sometimes increasing the value of our shares, you know, per share valuation. So there are many different uh, perspectives that we look to uh, the things and then we make decisions accordingly. In order to increase my profits, I should do this. I should not do this. In order to increase the share value of my company, I should do this. I should not do this. So I say that the most important thing before I take such a decision to increase my sales volume or to get more market share or uh, just uh, to beat competition, the most important thing will be to look at the decisions, evaluate uh, the behaviors, evaluate uh, all the, let's say, problems from an ethics perspective. And I say to every manager that before you take a decision, before you take a decision, whatever criteria you use to take that decision, don't implement that decision immediately. Put that decision aside. I just say, I, I took this decision. I am going to apply this decision, but before applying this decision, from your pocket, take your ethical uh, spectacles, put it on, and look with your uh, ethical spectacles saying, is this decision ethical or not? Is this behavior, will this behavior be ethical or not? Uh, would this implementation be ethical or not? Uh, and my recommendation is, if it is not ethical, please don't take that decision. Please, please don't do that thing. But if you say, Mr. Gulen, what can I do? I should do it. I say, okay, do it, Ulan, Lana, do it. <laughs> but I say, it is better. It is better for you to do something unethical. Uh, but to know what you're doing unethical is something really very important for us and something very important for you because you will remember that unethical decision always in future. It will be in your mind always. The worst thing really is to take an unethical decision without being aware of the fact that, that it is unethical. Some people believe it is unethical. Some people believe it's the right thing to do. No, you're doing the wrong thing. That is the most difficult and most really uh, uh, problematic uh, uh, approach of a, a manager to take a decision, to make an implementation or to make a behavior, uh, thinking that it is the right thing to do. That's the worst scenario. So I say it's our duty really to train the managers uh, to be able to evaluate the situation from an ethical perspective and really understand that something is unethical there. If they think something is unethical, then the next uh, question is, is ethics here in more important or profitability more important? It is up to the manager, you know, but at least if profitability is important and he takes that decision and he knows that it's an unethical decision, he will not perhaps repeat that in future. He will try to take certain precautionary actions in future so that he doesn't fall into the same situation again. 
because when he's when he sleeps, you know, he can't sleep well because of that unethical decision. Uh, so uh, really, uh, the duty here should be give the knowledge of ethics, uh, train the managers uh, to be aware of looking things from ethical perspectives. And when when I'm when I'm teaching in the <clears throat> university business ethics courses. There are certain, let's say, cases that I share with my students and I say, is this ethical? Uh, I say, uh, who votes uh, for the, uh, that this case, uh, what, whatever the CEO has done ethical, half of the students say ethical. I say, who says unethical? Half of them says unethical. But I say, look, even in this class, it is the same case. Half of you say ethical, half of you say unethical. <laughs> Uh, so therefore, you know, uh, let me give you some tools, let me give you, you some, uh, you know, indications and a way to look at uh, the decisions so you will develop more skills for uh, determining what is ethical, what is not ethical, and it really helps. Um. Yes, Mr. Shanwell, um, your course will be under the certification programs. So I'm inviting all participants go to uh, content parts uh, in the lobby area uh, of the business school. Please find ethics, qualified ethics and compliance executive certification program. And it is downloadable. Please download it and uh, check the content. Uh, this course, after this course, you will have a proficiency test with 150 questions. If you pass the proficiency test, you will certify by the WBA Business School as Qualified Ethics and Compliance Executive Certification Program. On the other hand, uh, under the Executive Development Courses part, uh, companies, institutions, even governments, governmental institutions will find, I think, uh, a value by joining the course ethical governance for global institutions course. Uh, in the first one, Mr. Sandler is going to address more to the individual, but here more to the individuals of institutions and more uh, institutional uh, uh, governance. In the elective course uh, part, uh, you can also join short courses. I think they are very uh, enjoyable, uh, by the way. For example, a short course on understanding the virtue of ethics, understanding the unethical behavior of institutions and managers, values and ethics principles for startup companies. I think it is very interesting. How to overcome ethical challenges in institutions, basic and advanced, ethical and unethical, uh, ethical and unethical decision-making process, how to develop an ethics code and code of conduct for your institution. It is very interesting. How to develop an ethics training program for your institution. How to develop an ethics audit program and audit reports based on international standards of auditing. Ethical case studies, analysis and discussions. How to fight ethical blindness in organizations. As a matter of fact, all of them are very interesting, uh, Mr. Sandberg. I mean, uh, I will also join, uh, I will try to join all of them because uh, uh, we are giving very importance at WBF to ethical uh, governance. We develop a code of conduct and announced it in the General Assembly last February in Istanbul. And uh, we want to develop it. Ethical Governance uh, Committee is uh, really working uh, very hard. Uh, so I think I think uh, participants will really find a, a great value by joining uh, this course, and uh, your energy is high, so it will be very enjoyable to take this course uh, yeah, from you. Uh, let me check uh, if uh, there are any questions. And uh, by this, by the way, uh, yes, Fatima Ahmed says. Definitely joining the ethical course, of course. Uh, and Nick says challenging, creating change in culture. Yeah, culture. these are all the things I think you will discuss in the course, yes. uh, however. Uh, uh, so I'm thanking you so much. 
uh, for uh, giving this opportunity to uh, participants of the WBAF Business School and also sharing your uh, know-how and experience with the world uh, uh, learners. Uh, thanks to Mr. COVID, now it is uh, easier to connect uh, with, the, uh, with everybody from around the world. And uh, thank you very much again for joining us. Uh, okay. Thank, thank you very much, Barbas. I, I, I appreciate your energy and your motivation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.